Hi guys, welcome back to another interesting tutorial. This is Ajalan here. Thank you so much for always coming around. If you're new here, you're welcome. Consider subscribing and don't forget to turn on the bell icon so that you get to know anytime I post new video. So for today, I am going to show us the easiest and useful formulas and calculation in sewing kits formal dresses. So if you're ready, let's get started. So we are going to start with the body's length. All right, as we all know, a body's length is simply the upper part of the dress, the inches that you want to use for that side. Now, to get your um, body's length, it is very easy. Most of the time, the body's length and the shoulder measurement is always the same. But I will advise that you measure the chart first because children differ in um, size and shapes. Some kids, the upper side, that is from their um, low waist upward is longer then while some um, it's shorter so you need to take the measurement yourself but what i am showing you is the standard for kids that are normal okay let me just use the word normal so this is the standard way or measurement of kids normal size for kids so now the body's length is the same as the shoulder measurement for example you the shoulder measurement that you're working with is um, say eight inches. So you should use that for um, The body's length. Remember that the body's length is also the waist line. Okay So now if you measure maybe you just measured um, the shoulder and you forgot to measure the body's length It is very easy. You don't need to stress. Just use the same um, shoulder measurement for that all right, so when you, when you have if you if you have a client as a tailor or as a fashion designer, you need to look at the chart. Okay, that is what I normally do. First and foremost, I'll look at the chart to know the structure, her body structure. From there, I know how to go about that. Okay. So that is that about body's length. It is very easy. Just use the same shoulder measurement as your body's length or the waist line so the next one now is the neck weight and neck depth so this part is very important okay so if you want to make a simple ball dress or an a-line dress just a simple dress all you need to do is to use divide the armhole measurement by two whatever you have there it's you can use that as the neck weight and neck depth for the front uh, for the front side. All right. So like what I have here, this is a three-year-old uh, body's pattern and the armhole measurement here is 4.5 It's 4.5. So if you divide that into two, it's going to give me two and quarter Okay, so it's going to give me two All right, like I was saying if you divide the armhole measurement by two like what I have here, 4.5, if you divide that by 2, it's going to give me 2.25, which is also the same as 2 and quarter. So that is what I use for both the neck width and the neck depth for the front. Now for the back, I use um, the same 2.25 as the neck width, but I use half inch for the neck depth. Now for the back, you decide how you want the back neckline to be if you want it a v you just come down to the chest line and connect it back to this um neck width point so you just decide how you want the back shape to be so that is how to go about getting your neck depth and neck width remember if you want to make a high collar or a high neck or a shirt dress you will need you will not be using this method okay so this method is just for uh, a formal dress that is just like say normal round neckline dress so you can use this formula and you will always get it right so if you want to make um a shirt dress maybe i'm going to drop the measurement to use for a fitted um high collar um shirt dress you know for dresses that the neckline is high i'm going to drop the measurement to use for that for different Ages. So that is how to go about knowing the neck depth and neck width of your dress. All right. Now the next thing now is to is to know how to go about getting the armhole 
measurements. So this part is very important because if you go wrong with your armhole measurement, it's going to affect the sleeve. Okay, so for you to do that, just divide the shoulder measurement by two. And that is how to go about getting your armhole measurement. It's very easy. Okay, so the shoulder measurement I'm working with is nine. If you divide, divide that by two, I have 4.5, which is what I did here. Okay, from this shoulder slope, I marked out the 4.5. Okay. So if you don't know how to go about drafting a basic bodies, I have a detailed video on how to go about that. So that is how to get the armhole measurement. I hope this part is clear. It is very easy. Just, you know, do the calculation with your own measurement. So we'll move on now to the chest palm measurement. All right, moving over now to the chest span measurement. So for that, um, a chest span measurement is simply the horizontal distance between two apex points of the chest. And we already know that the two apex points on the chest is the nipple. Okay, so now to get that, it is very easy. And remember that you would need your chest span measurement if you want to add a dart to the dress. Okay, remember that Adding that is very important to a dress, especially if you're making that dress for a plus size baby. All right, like I was saying, to get the chest span measurement, all you need to do is to divide the chest measurement by 8 and then minus 0 0.75 from it. Now here I have my pattern and the chest measurement that I'm using here is 24. is 24 so if you divide this by 8 it's going to give me um, it's going to give me 3 okay so it's going to give me 3 a minus 0 0.75 from 8 and I will have 2.25 okay so if you multiply this by 2 it is going to be it is going to be 4.5 you know 2.25 is when you place your paper on fold by the time you open it up you're going to have 4.5 now for this uh, chest measurement the chest pan is 4.5 this is what you'll be using when you want to add a dart to a dress and now I'm going to show us how to mark that on our pattern paper or on your fabric now most times some people make mistake in um, adding that to their dress so here i have this pattern paper all right here i have my pattern paper this is for a one year old pattern paper i just want to show you how to um, draft or how to sew in the darts like i was saying a lot of people don't know how to do this very well so this is my pattern paper and the chest measurement for this is 20 inches this is for a one year old so 20 multi uh, divided by 8 is going to give me 2.5 if you minus 0 0.75 from that i will have 1.75 now if you multiply that by 2 it is 3 0.5. So for this one year old, assuming you want to put for a one year old, which I don't advise, if you want to put uh, that to your dress, I, uh, it should be from three years upwards. All right. And remember that it depends on the design that you're trying to create. So like I was saying, 3.5 now is the chest pan measurement. So how do you mark that? Unfold. Normally, you put your paper on fold and on fold you need to mark out the 1.75. Remember that when you open it up, it will give you 3.5. So this is 1.75 here, which is 1 and 3 quarter. So a lot of people will mark this way, will mark and then add their side, the that sewing allowance, which is wrong. All you need to do is to mark uh, the one point. 75 or whatever you have then after marking that now you're going to be adding um, If you want to use quarter an inch as the dart sewing allowance, you know, it should be two for the two leg That is the two dart legs. So that should be half. So just include the half there this way So this is half Okay, now this is half you will now divide that into two when you want to mark I hope you can see what I am doing 
so you have to divide into two so that by the time you fold or you sew your dart this way you still have your 1.75 intact but if you mark the dart leg this other way after marking uh, the chest band measurement you're going to have shortages on this side so you need to after marking the darts add whatever sewing allowance you want to use on the other side and then divide it into two that way you um, sew it very well now for the darts you need to come down from the chest line you need to come down uh, say 1.75 from this chest line that is how to do that for the back you come down using two inches now if you're making a shirt uh, from the hip line just go up by 2.75 or 2.5 inch inches that is for the dart but for board dresses like this just come down by 1.75 from the chest line and you will get it right so this is how to go about getting your chest pan and also uh, marking or sewing your darts accurately all right before we continue like i said earlier this is how to go about um, marking out your dart so if you want to make it a princess line or a princess dart it is very easy all you need to do is to divide what you have on the armhole into two and then mark the mid point so i'm going to check what i have i'm just placing my tape to check what i have here i have six and quarter and then i'm going to divide that into two which is here this is the point all right so i'll just use my ruler and connect it nicely okay yeah you don't need to give it any um too much stress it's just connect very easy and make sure that you don't have any pointy edge after connecting so this is how you go about getting your um princess that if you want to add it to your dress so now the next thing we are going to calculate now is how to get the cap height and we know that it is very very important if you're drafting a sleeve so what is a cap height it all right like i was saying the um cap height is simply from the shoulder tip to the bicep or the um underarm now we already know that the bicep is the um, thickest part of the arm so your calf's height should be from the tip of the shoulder to the bicep point and for you to get uh, to know that it is very easy all you need to do is to know the bicep measurement because you're going to use your bicep measurement to get or to calculate for the calves height all right so now for the bicep measurement in case you don't know how to calculate that it is very easy all you need to do is to use your body's length the one you're working with like mine i am working with um, nine inches as the body's length so i'll just minus two inches from that that is how to go about getting your bicep measurement which is what you're going to use to calculate for the calves height so for that i'll minus two inches from the uh, body's length so if i do that this is nine that is what i am working with if you minus two from it i will have seven then you're going to add one for ease you know kids um sleeve does not need you don't need to make it tight it should be as free as possible so that it will not disturb them so if you add one to that that is eight now the bicep measurement now is eight for you to get the calves height just minus uh, 1.5 inches from whatever you have with your own calculation so if i minus 1.5 from this i'll have 6.5 okay so 6.5 you divide now into two okay and it's going to give me three and quarter okay so three and quarter now is my caps height i hope you understand this part very well just get the bicep measurement by using the body length minus by two then add your one inch for the ease whatever you have there now you minus 1.5 from it and then divide by two to get the caps height you know when you divide by two because your paper will also be on fold when you're marking by the time you open it up you still have the initial 6.5 or whatever measurements that you're working with so 
just use your own measurement and do the calculation to get it right so this is how to go about the bicep measurement and the calves height so we're going to continue now to the off the shoulder sleeve as well as off the shoulder neckline so before we move over to the off the shoulder neckline and off the shoulder sleeve um, we've done so far the body length which i said it is uh, the same thing with your shoulder measurement now for neckline width and neckline depth you just use your armhole measurement and divide by two and we also said that for you to get your chest pan measurement it's simply chest measurement divided by eight minus 0 0.75 now for the body length sorry for the bicep measurement we said that for you to get that you will be using the body length minus two plus one okay now for the caps height is the bicep measurement minus 1.5 divided by two so that is what we've done so far so we'll continue with the off the shoulder neck depth as well as off the shoulder neck width now if you want to make an off the shoulder that will have a little strap you'll be using the same neck uh, width that i said earlier using your um armhole measurement divided by two you're going to use that for the neck width for example here is the neck width for this one that I have here. If you want to um, add a strap to your off shoulder, all you need to do is just to connect. Okay, so from this neck depth, you just mark out the same two and quarter, which is what I use, and then you connect that straight. That is for an off the shoulder that will have a strap. This is how you connect and then you connect this side as well. So this part now is going to be the strap while this area is going to be the off the shoulder. Now, if you don't want to add any strap to your off uh, the shoulder neckline, all you need to do is to connect it straight as it is. But now before you do that, you also need to know your neck line depth that is how low you want the off shoulder to be so most people use exactly the neck depth that they have but for me i normally add either half or 0 0.5 inches downward from this initial um neck depth okay so for this i'll just add half which is here and then you connect it straight to this armhole line all right so now this is your off the shoulder neck depth okay this part while this is your neck width now without um, any strap this is how you you go about getting the off the shoulder neckline and neck depth so for off the shoulder sleeve it is very simple all you need to do is to take the round the shoulder measurement and then minus it from this round neckline this is now your new of the shoulder neckline remember so for example now for you to get the of the shoulder sleeve you need to check what you have from here as you can see i have four inches i remember this is going to be for the other side as well you know this is just half so the other side of the front is also for making it eight inches remember the back should also be four that is to say front is um eight back is also eight making it 16. now for this the round the shoulder measurement is 26 so you minus you minus um 16 from it and we have 10 divide that by four that is what you'll be using as your off the shoulder sleeve i hope this part is very clear so just for the off the shoulder sleeve it is simply round the shoulder measurement minus the off the shoulder neckline divide that by four and you get it right so this is how to go about your off the shoulder sleeve and off the shoulder neckline all right moving over now to the hip line how do you get the hip line 
uh, measurement it is very simple all you need to do is to add six inches to the body's length and you have the hip line for example now for mine the body's length is nine plus six so for this now the hip line is 15 inches so from the shoulder to the hip line now is 15 inches so this is important if you are making a shirt or um, a pant or a trouser for the baby so this is how to go about getting the hip line it is very easy now the next thing that you will also need to know is how to get the crotch line so for the crotch um, for the crotch it is very simple all you need to do is to divide the hip measurements or the hip circumference you just need to divide that all right like i was saying you just need to divide the hip measurement by four and you'll get um, the crotch measurement and uh, for you to know the hip measurement it is usually two inches that is just add two inches to the chest measurement for example if the chest measurement you're working with is 20 just add two inches to that and that is your hip measurement but like i always advise for you to take the measurement by yourself especially for kids that are chubby so you need to take the measurement by yourself for you to get it right so this is how to go about getting the crotch measurement okay so the next thing again is the shirt length which i just said now the shirt length is from the shoulder to the hip line that is your shirt length for this now this same 15 inches is the shirt length so if you want to get your shirt length just um, add six inches to the body's length this works very well for the shirt length uh, your client now said okay use whatever you have left and do something for my baby girl so you don't need to tell the woman to bring the child over for um, measurements again so you need to know all these basic calculations so that you can get all your dresses right so you're going to move over now to the sleeve length so how do you get your sleeve length it is very simple it's just the shirt length minus one all right so for this now remember i said with this measurement that i am that i have here the shirt length is 15 just minus one from eight i have 14 so this 14 now is the sleeve length so this worked very perfectly now that is how to go about getting your sleeve length so there are so many calculations or so many shortcuts for you to get all that you need to make whether a board dress or a pants a trouser okay so there's there are so many shortcuts to do that so for pant length and other ones like the ankle length the knee length there are so so many of them so you can join our online class that is coming up very soon so that you know more of all these things so so far i said for you to get your hip line is just the body's length plus six for you to get your crotch depth it is the hip measurement divided by four and then for shirt length it is the bo uh, body's length plus six then for your sleeve length it is the shirt length minus one so this is how to go about knowing your calculations so that is it for today please subscribe if you have not and i will see you in my next video